Right now, Met Dollar is increasing at such a rapid pace that it's impossible to keep up with everything. So what we've built is an AI-powered search engine to help medical doctors and other medical professionals find what they need really quickly. Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and the innovators who are transforming health. I'm your host, Logan Plaster, with my friend here, Keith Su, the CEO and co-founder of Medwise AI. Keith, great to see you. Great to see you too. Last time I saw you, we were at an event at the Google headquarters in London. Yes, indeed. Uh, I, I know a lot has happened since then. So every startup needs to have a challenge that they are addressing. What was the, it that was broken in healthcare or in the world that caused you to start this company? Yeah, so it actually started with my own personal experience. So I'm a medical doctor by background. And when I was practicing, I was doing night shifts. I was working hundreds hour work week and it can get very tiring. And sometimes I would forget stuff and I'm just not um, the sharpest when it's 2 a.m. at night. And I would actually lean on Google to help me to make those clinical decisions. And I also use up to date and sometimes it's like a 200 page PDF document within a hospital intranet, which is super difficult to search. So healthcare is actually a knowledge industry. Um, and we go for medical school, we train for many years. Um, but right now, medical knowledge is increasing at such a rapid pace that it's impossible to keep up with everything. So what we've built is an AI powered search engine to help medical doctors and other medical professionals find what they need really quickly. Now, what was it about you that made you think, okay, I could be the one to solve this problem. There's a lot of doctors who come up against that challenge and they just end up in frustration. And then there are founders who say, you know what, I'm going to kind of make a leap. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to build something. So why? I have always been really passionate about this problem, but I didn't jump in right away. Um, actually, I started the company after I saw one technological breakthrough, uh, which is GPT 1.0. Okay. Um, so I guess we're a little bit ahead of the curve. Everyone have heard of ChatGPT now, but when I saw GPT 1.0, I figured that actually two person in a garage, a doctor and an engineer could potentially use this technology to build something that can rival Google. Uh, I think that's a one in a lifetime opportunity, so I jumped right in. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the milestones. You have the idea, you're in a garage, you're two people. So um, when, when did you come to market? Kind of how have people responded? Yeah, so actually in, in the first couple of years, these AI technology are still relatively new. It's not as powerful as they are today. So it took a bit of time for us to really develop the technology um, to get it to a point to market. Um, but, but since now that we've launched it to the market, we've got thousands of clinicians using it in the UK uh, actively daily, weekly already. And that's why we're really excited to come to the US and see how, what we can do here as well. Okay. I think I read that you raised more than a million dollars in grants. Is that right? Yeah. So we recently actually closed 2.2 million oh, wow. in okay. both Congrats. grants and equity. Um, so to support further development. So one of the things that we're looking at is potential the uh, opening up our platform to integrate with other partners in the ecosystem like AI scribe companies. So uh, very excited to be health, having a lot of amazing conversations already. So you were early uh, in the market. It feels like now maybe the market is getting crowded. Is it, is it a crowded market in that particular space? Yeah, absolutely. Luckily, it's not as crowded as the AI scribe space, uh, but it's definitely there are more and more companies, um, either existing companies try to launch search in their products um, or new companies uh, doing a search as well. I think our key differentiation is that we're using an agentic AI approach rather than a generative AI approach. Okay, so explain what that means. Yeah. Um, so what generative AI does is that you give a large language model a lot of knowledge, for example, clinical guidelines, train it, fine tune it, and then ask questions to basically ask the large language model to regurgitate that information. Uh, but that approach would will always, by first principle, have risk of hallucinations, which in healthcare can be dangerous. Yeah. Um, what we're doing is we're building our AI using an agentic AI approach, which means we're, we're basically asking the AI to mimic how a human doctor would do a search. So we would go to trusted sources only, we'll read all the content, and you only use the content from a trusted source as the, as the answer. So everything is traceable, there's no black box, it's much safer. Uh, in the UK, where we've been certified across the highest standards already, unlike a chat GPT, which a doctor can still use it, but then when things go wrong, yeah. uh, where, where li the liability lies will be with the doctor. So we want to provide the right tools, uh, the best tools to empower healthcare professionals. Uh, 
educate us on the risks of hallucination. Let's say you have a, a startup wanting to use a, a GPT and they're using a black box technology. Maybe they're not thinking through all the, the risks. What are some of those risks? Yeah, so I think ChatGPT is an amazing technology, but it's such a generalist tool. Uh, it's not specifically designed for healthcare. So there's actually a research published uh, by the Stanford AI group. They've tested multiple large language models, even giving them access to the internet, to knowledge resources. So G GPT-4 plus the internet for medical answers, 30% of the answers are incorrect. And 50% of the citations uh, for the answers are also incorrect. So for, for medical use cases, it's just not. So even the citation, so it, give, it would give you the false sense of security. Exactly. You would look at the bibliography, or if you yeah. will, you know, the citations, and uh, you think, oh, there's, back, there's backing here, unless you went and actually checked. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it's, a, it's also dangerous because like the citations looks like it, it's correct. When you click on it, it actually brings you to a website that correlates to the, to the answer. But actually, there's no content in that website that substantiates the answer. So it's, if a medical doctor needs to verify every citation, then it actually takes longer than doing a Google search. Okay, okay. So the agent plus AI um, technique here is critical. Do you see the future being all white box AI technology? Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, we're, we're moving from kind of like the phase one is to generative AI approach. Now, more and more companies are using the agentic AI approach, agentic AI workflow. Um, and, and basically, this is training the AI to perform tasks rather than just generating content and answers. Okay. And generate that those answers based off of known workflows, known areas of uh, information on the, on the internet that yeah. are traceable. Exactly, because uh, a large language model like ChatGPT is just trained on all the text on the internet, plus maybe some books, etc. It, it lists literally everything, right? So it's a probabil probabilistic model of saying, okay, what's the likely next word or sentence? Um, and it doesn't actually have that knowledge. It seems like it has the knowledge, but it doesn't. So you, we need to put a lot of guardrails um, and to make sure that these applications are safe yeah. and reliable in healthcare. One of the things I find interesting about Medwise is that you're coming from the UK, you're talking about branching into the US, and I, and I know Europe has, I think, stricter rules around uh, data and around the use in, in healthcare. So I like that you're bringing some of that ethos to, you know, to the United States, and, um, and we can benefit from the care that you're taking around the data. Um, last question, what, what's next for Medwise AI? What should we looking forward to? Yeah, we're super excited to bring the technology to the U.S. We've already had amazing chats with physicians, uh, family physicians, emergency physicians in the U.S. We'll, we look forward to working with them and bringing out solutions across the Atlantic. All right, Keith, thanks for the update. Wish you the best. Thank you. Take care.